So hi dudes, welcome from a blustery windy uh, Warsaw on a Sunday morning. Now I said a couple of vlogs ago that I'd be doing some mini vlogs touching on key topics and key takeaways, little golden nuggets of knowledge that I had discovered during the course of my 52 first dates series by my books you bastards. And uh, I'm going to actually look at an actual story where I think I learned a huge amount about frame. So that's going to be the topic of this morning's vlog. What is frame really? Now before I come on to the story and to my conclusions and the takeaways, I just wanted to say a big thank you to the dudes who've been watching this vlog. I invited guys to get in touch and to meet over Skype and I had, uh, I've had three responses actually and I'm just incredibly relieved to find out that these dudes are regular average Joes successfully day gaming out there in the streets and I, I found in particular with the second vlog where actually we met in person over a drink it was uh, I think it was really helpful for this dude because you know he was actually going out and doing the work he was actually getting results in terms of strong numbers that were texting um, but he didn't have a sort of a sense of perspective on exactly where things were going wrong and just by looking at a bunch of texts like a sample of half a dozen texts we were able to you know identify that actually he was at doing really well in the streets but he was having difficulty with the texting part of the dating process which is quite interesting because guys often talk about how you know while well, texting you know just send a couple of pings and then date request and texting takes care of itself but this is the thing we are all at different stages of the journey and we that you know we all have different sticking points and it you know it's actually very difficult to see where your sticking points are without having a dude there sat in front of you and tailoring you know feedback to the particular circumstances of your case that's actually what i do as the lawyer I, people often try and hit me up for general legal advice and quite frankly it's less than use, useless because they go away with some general takeaway that's not actually tailored to these particular circumstances of their situation so uh, um, thanks to the comments as well I, I know I'm not a top cat in terms of responding to comments uh, I do where I can I'm just kind of extremely busy these days uh, but uh, you know thank you for leaving leaving those comments they are read so uh, right what is frame okay now fr and what are frame tests now commonly we tend to think that kind of frame is like where you I mean let's just have a look at a couple of examples in terms of relationship to girls it might be where she is battling with you over text to make the location somewhere where it suits her uh, i recently went to russia and she battled with me over texts about well she wanted to change the place location and change the times etc etc uh, frame is often thought of as you know like being strong not putting up with childish behavior uh, we all know that girls like to test guys uh, and you know that's a case of um, taking the frame frame is very important uh, very important in fact a girl seems to not really respect uh, and, and feel actual genuine attraction to a, a guy where he where, where she's basically giving him the runaround so it's it's often quite a key and important component particularly for the sort of intermediate dating and day game dude um, so I'm just going to tell you the story and, and uh, had some quite interesting conclusions and reflections from the particular story. So if you read dates, uh, books part 10 and 11, you'll see them as a story involving a Russian bird. Uh, it was a particularly good, particularly strong approach in a Russian city um, had a fantastic instant date. And then we were on the second date and uh, I was a little bit lackluster. We had a quick drink and then I decided to take her to another bar. And on the way, I took her via my apartment, tried to get her up, she wasn't having any of it. She stood out in the snow, it was winter, 
uh, like a stone statue and refused to come up whilst I said I just needed to upload a video or charge on my phone or something like that. Anyway, I came back down again, we walked off and I was thinking of taking, to her, to, to, uh, taking her to a particular bar, but actually I uh, wasn't hugely enthusiastic about that bar. It was a Sunday afternoon. Anyway, at the corner of the street, she said, how about going to the National Art Gallery? And I was like, well, uh, I don't know. I was like, well, shouldn't I be leading the date? You know, it was the first proper date that we'd had. I felt a little bit like I should be in control. Uh, and this is the thing, o often in those situations, you know, what you think might be taking the frame is just being stu stupidly stubborn and belligerent, you know. Uh, anyway, I said, well, that's actually quite a good idea. So we went, we went off to the National Art Gallery. It actually was a reference to one of the conversations that we had about art. So there was kind of a connection there. Anyway, so we walked around this gallery. Now, you will know, if, you, if you've ever been out with a girl on a date and, you know, like you're going shopping or you're going around a gallery or to an exhibition or something like that, the temptation is, isn't it, to, uh, you know, be joined at the hip. And, you know, if she wants to go there, you follow her. And then she wants to go over there and you follow her. And it was a little bit like that in this art gallery. It was almost as if she wanted to cover every single room in the gallery. Anyway, we got to this spot. We were looking at this one painting, which I found quite interesting. And we were stood there and I was looking at it and just, there was a moment of silence. And, and, and then she finished looking at it and she said, come on, are we going? And I, I, I started to feel like a little doggy that was being yanked from one room to the next by her. Um, and I just said to her, you know what, Natalia, people, tourists, spend all their time running around a gallery trying to see everything in one visit. I mean, th these works of art are painted by some of the world's finest artists. And you just want to sort of like tick off the paintings in, the, in every single room and then move off without ever having actually really looked at properly just one painting. And I said, you know what, if you go to an art gallery, just be selective. Just see, you know, three or five paintings or uh, one particular artist's work and leave it at that. It's better to really enjoy and connect with a, a good painting and an artist's vision than it is to run around the entire gallery, tick boxing every painting in the joint. And I, I said this with some passion. I was a younger man, I was very interested in art. And did, uh, I, did, I painted a lot, actually. I used to go traveling with my watercolors. This is 20 years ago now, but I felt quite passionate about this particular topic. And as I was talking, I noticed, and the, the funny thing is, I was speaking in English, and yet her English is not good. Most of the interactions up until that point had taken place on good old Google Translate. But she really seemed as if she had registered what I was saying. It was, it was almost as if there was the motion and the passion what I was saying made the connection communicated to her um, far more effectively than, simple, than, you know, than the simple words would. Uh, and I noticed she got quite close to me so that her breasts were actually touching my jacket and she was sort of suddenly warm and she sort of almost melted for a moment. And, and after that, I led, we went round the gallery. I actually said, look, just go and have a look at the paintings you'd like to look at. I'm gonna do the same. We'll meet up at the end of the afternoon. And so that is what we did. Um, after the day, on the way to a, a further location, we had tea together, we made out in the street. Uh, uh, and that again was a magical moment but I, I don't think I'm, I'm sure that moment wouldn't have happened had I not um, taken the frame now here's the interesting thing I hadn't got any sort of particular prescriptive formula or, or fixed idea other than that you know I, I'd, I'd had uh, before I'd met her I'd obviously had, had a plan um, so it, it wasn't as if I was trying to sort of 
take or see something. And I, and I know, and I notice this sometimes in guys who've been day gaming a lot, is that even when they're out with drinks with their mates, they want to lead, they want to buy the drinks, they um, want to control the conversation. But what was interesting to me was that, that this, which was probably one of the most effective sort of frame control moments I'd ever met, had very little to do with control. It had very little to do with kind of like uh, stubbornly uh, doing what in fact a girl tends to do to us, which is sort of like just go where they want to go, their ego wants to take them, I want to do this, you're coming this way. It was, it was just falling still as I was watching this painting, so being self-aware, key number one when you're out on a date, not doing too much non-stop talking uh, and just sort of resting and relaxing and being self-aware I mean, even watch the thoughts that are moving in your own mind and see how you know, they're constantly making suggestions and proposals and almost sort of compelling you to act on impulses don't do anything just be self-aware uh, the other thing I noticed was that I was talking from the heart not from the head so it was like there was communication coming from here. You know when you're often in a situation with guys, um, friends, mates, family perhaps, and you're like very reluctant because you're afraid of uh, displeasing somebody, to, and, but, you, and, but yet you feel something bubbling up from here and you actually feel some nerves about what it is that you're about to, you're about to say and a sort of reluctance to say anything at all and so you kind of decide to, to play it safe and just say, yeah, I couldn't agree more in X, Y, Z. Um, but this was coming from uh, right down here and not up there. And the other thing was, it was me expressing an opinion which is perhaps not generally accepted, um, but which about which I feel quite strongly. And I think sort of polarising in this way and actually putting your cards on the table and saying, look, you know, I actually think it's ridiculous trying to see too many paintings. In fact, I'd just like to go into a gallery and watch, look at one painting, and then I go and have a cup of tea. But I really do. I sit down, I peruse it, I perhaps read a little bit of text, I learn about the artist, I look at the brushwork, I look at it from a distance. But I really do savour and enjoy, like a fine wine, that one work of art then I leave the gallery fulfilled. And that's something that I feel strongly about. And that's something that if, particularly in a, what was virtually a first date with a girl, you, you know, you risk um, alienating her because you don't want to, do, you know, you're afraid of displeasing her. But actually the reverse is the case. By speaking from the heart about what is genuinely true for you, it's something that you are really passionate about, you know, you, f you flip the whole thing 180 degrees and generate attraction. Um, this is a girl who later on came and visited me in Warsaw and we had a, you know, a magical a romantic weekend together. Uh, and I think I credit a lot of the sort of gear change in uh, the, the dating sequence with her down to that one afternoon. So there it is, it, it's not about control, it's not about uh, uh, stubbornly feeling you have to lead. Uh, it's about uh, self-awareness. It's about speaking from the, the, the heart. I mean, it is physically down there in the stomach somewhere and not from the head. Uh, and it is about uh, po risking polarizing the person that, that you're with, uh, expressing a, a, a passionate opinion about something that you, that you truly hold. And uh, the combination of those things is what actually led to me taking the, the frame. And, you know, it wasn't taking the frame. This is the misconception around the word. It was actually just, you know, um, I was about to say being yourself, but that is a bad steer for anybody in terms of dating advice. Don't adopt that as a dating advice. Uh, you know, but ultimately, it, it was perhaps 
a better expression would be being true to yourself and being transparent about who you are and your opinions about yourself and about the world. Okay guys, thanks for uh, tuning in. Buy my book, bloody books, you bastards. I've just, I've been absolutely virtually bleeding at the forehead producing this great compendium, um, 52 First Dates. I'm, I've just finished part 11. I've got a part 12 and an epilogue. Then I'll box them up into two separate box sets. Uh, they will be available in both uh, paperback and Kindle eventually. Okay, uh, until next time, have fun out on those streets.